Hello, everybody. Uh, you know, it's been uh, 10 years when I was in Brno and I heard first time in my life about graph databases. And now I'm here speaking in Brno again, or instead I'm speaking, and I'm going to speak about the, about the graph databases, which are really big part about my life. Uh, I am author of the PHP Bold Protocol Library for communication with uh, graph databases. If you don't know specifically what it is, it's not a problem. It's just a standard for communication with the graph databases. Uh, I have received a Graphy Award as most valuable player in ecosystems for this driver, and it's used by big companies like Adobe and uh, dozens of millions of users are flowing through my driver. Uh, I am also a Neo4j certified professional and I have many years of experiences in different areas of software development, game development, automatization and some other stuff. So in the beginning I think I should say what are these graph databases. There are different types of databases. Uh, it depends how we store the data in the database. Uh, we have the typical types you are probably familiar with. is the key value, like Redis. We have column family, which is traditional relational databases like SQL. And then we have some document databases like MongoDB. And last addition was the graph databases. So how the graph database store data? Uh, the structure is a little bit interesting because we have nodes, that's the circles, and we have relationships or edges, that's the arrows between them. So we can have every information stored as a node and we can create how many relationships we want between them. Uh, it's very powerful and it's simple. And every relationship and every node can have properties, any kind of properties we want. So here is an example how the data stored in the graph database looks like when we work with them, when we visualize them. It's nice for presentation, but it's not very practical if you are administrators or, or software developers and you want to change something because you don't see too much information. It's very, very good for presentation. <laughs> and also, what is interesting fact, many people think about graph database in relationship with data science, but doesn't it that, that doesn't have to be true because it's still database. You can store data in it and you don't have to use any data science or analytics or anything. I, I created many projects uh, and I use the graph database as a database and it works great. So, because I created multiple projects, I met this problem many times and I was not the only one. When I needed to change something like some property on some node, something very simple, simple task, but so different and so hard in graph environment because you have all this structure with nodes and you don't know where it is. So I was thinking about different approach to visualize the data. And you are probably familiar with something like this. It's a table style where you can just click into the cell and you can just change the data. It's very simple and software developers and administrators are used to use this for decades. They are familiar with SQL for decades. And now we have some graph database and we have to learn something new. That's not very user friendly or administrator friendly. So I was thinking about that. And if you look again on this structure, we have nodes and each node has a label. We can use the label as a table name and the properties can be columns. So that means we have the table structure which we can visualize with the graph data. So I was putting down some list what I want to create. I wanted to create a tool 
which will visualize the data in table structure. And also I want it to be simple like PHP my admin, if you are familiar with. It's very simple tool, you just deploy, run, and you can ch change the data. So I wanted, wanted something similar. You just grab, copy somewhere, run it, and change the data. That was my goal. And also, I wanted to be user-friendly without the requirement to learn the CQL. CQL is a shortcut for Cypher query language, because the graph databases are using the CQL instead of SQL. So I wanted to provide a tool which doesn't require the SQL knowledge, but still it lets you use the SQL if you need to. So I created a tool called Cypher GUI. It took me some time and I put down very interesting solution written in JavaScript running completely only in front end so you don't need any back end you don't need you don't have to be online you just you can just run it as a file you just double click your html file open it in the browser and you can immediately access your database if it's in the same network of course or on the same computer so this is how the landing page looks like very simple it's database so we just need some login informations So if we log in, at the starting tab, we see currently existing nodes, labels, and relationship types, and we can click on any of it. And what it, does it do? It will open a table. And this is nodes in the database. Uh, the element ID you can ignore. It's just something generated by the database itself. It helps to identify the nodes. But you can see there is an edit button on the left with the ID. You can see there is a delete button for the row which del deletes the node. And there is also labels of the node and the additional properties so you can all see as a table, you can sort, you can search. And this way, you can really easily access and change your data. So if we click on, on the edit button on any row, it will open edit as a new tab on top. And you can change the values, the properties, you can change the relationships. In a very simple way, you just add the property, you choose the data type, you write the key and value. And what is very nice feature, anytime you are doing something, it always show you the CQL query it will be run. So you can learn by using this tool. And also you can click on the CQL down written, generated, and it will copy to clip clipboard immediately, which is a very handy feature. Uh, editing a relationship is a bit different because it has some starting node and ending node. The arrow has to go from somewhere to somewhere. So the properties has the same concept, but instead of relationship, we just have the starting and ending node. You can change easily, or you can also traverse through the data because you can click on the label person, or you can click on the edit button 57 and you can go immediately to the, to the tab with the information you can change. So it's easy to navigate. And like I said, you can also run own queries if you want. You can just click on the query button top right. It will open new tab. You can write down the query, which is also syntax highlighting. And you can execute the query and it will show you the result. And as you probably noticed, I'm using the same design for showing the nodes and relationships everywhere. It's just button with label, then edit button with the ID, and probably a properties button which shows model with the JSON, so you can easily copy the data anytime you need them. So. So this way, 
because the design of showing the data is unified, you really know what are you dealing with. And that makes the tool very user friendly. What kind of tool it would be for graph databases if, if it doesn't have a graph view? <laughs> so I had to implement a graph view also. Uh, it's powered by ORP, very powerful JavaScript open source library. And you can uh, change how it looks like. You can change the shapes and colors. So this graph view uh, is interactive. You can click on the nodes and on the right sidebar it will show you the information about the node and you can also uh, edit from there. You can uh, click on the label and show the table with all the nodes with that label. So it's really practical even if it's graph view. It will, it will let you to move and traverse through the data. Last thing I would like to mention in this Cypher GUI is the stash. It's open in the bottom right corner right now. Usually it's closed. And here you can stash any node or any relationships or any query you want. And you can have fast access to them. So for example, if you are developing something and you are just working with some few nodes and you want to always update them or change something with them. You can keep them stashed and you can access them anytime. Uh, in the end, I will also show settings because some people prefer to customize the tools. And what is nice thing, this Cypher GUI is using the browser local storage. That means uh, if you reopen the tool from the same URL, uh, it remembers your data. So it remembers what you stashed. It remembers your open tabs, your written queries, everything. But you can also disable that function settings, which is not visible right now because this is old screenshot and that feature is new. <laughs> so I'm glad you enjoyed my presentation about this tool. Graph databases are really powerful and uh, I really li like them. So I hope you give it, a, give it a try and thank you for your attending. So do I have time for questions? So any questions? Okay, that's okay. So I hope you will like my tool if you will try it. And if you like, you can hit the GitHub star icon. <laughs> Thank you so much.